It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget to click subscribe. So I got this commission to uh, actually do and um, I'm going to be doing it in watercolors and gouache today um, because well why not <laughs> so I've taken the liberty of drawing uh, the peg out and I'm just in the process of just erasing um, some of the lines like this and I love working in in watercolors and, and gouache and this is just ordinary um, cardboard this is a scrapbook actually so I've got two different types of water. I've got a clean water and a dirty water, which I'm going to be washing my brushes in. And I, I didn't actually pick up any. Um, I didn't actually pick up any uh, kitchen roll. So I'm just going to go into a little bit of black watercolor like this, and um, I'm going to start painting some the dark areas in first just want to establish that now you can paint this in acrylics if you want to but I'm just using watercolor and gouache just for now as I said this is to me this is just a test painting and I tend to use watercolors more like um more like for designing things then rather than um, when we start doing watercolor landscapes and things like this this is this is more of a design thing for me um, and I quite enjoy using a different medium and if you want to practice um, with acrylics then to just try painting um, with gouache and, and, and that like this because if you can if you can master if you can master the gouache and the um, watercolor type of painting then painting acrylics is quite easy because it works in a um, very similar way to to acrylics being a water-based type of paint as well so I've just put a couple of little marks in there what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to change my brush I'm just picking up uh, a short flat I've got some homemade um, gouache there I've, I've made some homemade gouache um, which I'm going to use I'm going to put that onto the palette like this there we go And this is quite a thick, um, opaque type of paint, as you can see. And as I said, it, it does tend to act a little bit like acrylics. Gouache is a, a fantastic thing if you can come to grips with it. It just makes for some very quick, easy type of paintings because this is a, a, a gouache on card it's going to dry quite quickly and unlike um, acrylics um, these paints will reactivate once if you make them wet again basically acrylics dry once acrylics are dry they are, they are dry when when um, watercolor or gouache is dry if you if you add water to it um, again even in a couple of days time it can reactivate which it does reactivate there you go I'm just going to get a little bit of black just on there is the black there we are so I'm just going to get a little bit of black like that not a lot not a lot and if you can see I'm just going to wet my brush and I'm going to pull that in 
and I'm going to bleed that in to the gouache like that. So we put the white on first just to get a little bit of texturing because this pug is he's a, like a whitey grey colour so and I'm sitting I'm not sitting at the easel today I'm sitting at the table and it's quite fun it's um, it makes a it makes for a change in fact because I'm, I'm always at the easel and sometimes it's just nice to just to paint in a different way again this lesson is more about um, a preparation painting um, because I can take this on to a, a, another stage take this on to another stage in acrylics and this is what I do with a lot of my my commission work is I actually work out what I want the painting to look like first and try and get a sort of um, resemblance to what I'm painting whether it's a human being or whether it's a little puggy like this so it's a wonderful way to paint I quite enjoy painting like this and with this gouache because it's quite opaque you can add a bit more layer to it especially if you're painting on with just a couple of colors like this one A little bit of water, a little bit of water like that. And let's just work on on this side because he's got a bit of a he's got a bit of an eyebrow coming up there. I've noticed they're quite wrinkly. He's he's he's, he's a bit wrinkly this one. He is a bit wrinkly this one. And we will develop that as we build. And you can't really make a mistake. Because if you make a little mistake like that, then you can just put a little bit of black over him. There you go. Just redefine that eye again. The best thing to remember is with this is to go from light to dark. Where there's with acrylics, you can go dark to light. The reason for that is that you try to put light on top of this, even with a gouache, it, it gets a little bit mucky because it re all reactivates. Okay, so let's concentrate a little bit more. Just on this wonderful little puggy. Benji his name is. He's a wonderful little dog. I've met him. Um, I took some, I've taken some um, photographs of him. And what I'm going to do now is spend, I don't know, just a, as long as this takes really. I don't know how long it's going to take. A little bit of black in there. And I'll just get an idea of the pose that I want. And then I shall take this along then to the customer and say, what do you think of that? And I say, and I'll, I'll also say that, don't worry if it's not, it doesn't look perfectly like him. It's not meant to, it's not meant to be perfect. This is not meant to be perfect. This is a study in color and a study in tone. And it's a, it's a study of getting to grips with or Benji's face and features. So it's not about likeness as such. This is more about getting to know where 
these little folds and things on them where this light will actually follow in his face or land on his face it's a, it's a bit of an unconventional way of painting with um, watercolour but this is mainly gouache today so it's just building up what you'll get to, uh, you'll get to a point where you can feel brush strokes you can feel the wrinkles in his face and eventually, eventually you will get there and once you've painted it once, or even twice what you're going to find is that when you've painted this a couple of times just to get the colour and get the features and get the feeling of Benji then when you come to painting in full size it's going to be a lot easier for you it's a technique a lot of artists use actually studies there's a lot of work goes behind the scene on commissions that you don't really think of you don't just sit down and and paint um, pictures straight off you can do if you want to um, some people do some people don't but I, I when I'm doing commissions I tend to think more about getting it to the place that I want to get it I need to make it make sure it's it's right and it relieves that stress of getting that first couple of brush strokes out the way because that can be quite a difficult thing to get those those couple of brush strokes once you get those first brush strokes in it can be quite it, it can be quite a difficult thing to to manage especially if you're a beginner I think see I'm quite loose and oh this is actually starting to merge together I can just pick up a bit of water and just blend that in and it's good practice it is good practice for acrylics as I've said what I'm going to do now is get a bit of black because I want to I want to do his ears I want to put his ears in because that's going to set it off then Nice to sit down, a bit of peace and quiet sometimes. My lovely wife has um, just gone to work and um, I'm currently sitting in the studio. I've taken the day off today because my van has decided to, to break down and there's nothing I can do. So I thought, I know, I'll go and start that commission well, I'll do that and what I'll do then is I'll film it for my 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 YouTube family there you go and see what they think see what they think of my my commission Just getting this U in place, put that in a bit thick then, but that's okay. What a wonderful way to actually practice with paint. Like I said, if you can get the grips with this as it is, you're going to be, um, make a wonderful acrylic artist. You certainly are. I'm always always thinking about 
where these shadows and things are going to fall. I'm just going to get them in place like that. Wash that brush. I'm going to sit back and have a little look because I'm sitting at a funny angle. Okay, just need a little bit of adjustment around here and there. Benji's a lovely dog. Always fancied a, a pug myself, but never actually. Don't tell Molly. <laughs> She will be upset. There's a little pug next door to me. And he's a wonderful little thing. And Molly does like him. Be afraid to try new things. You never know. You might find that you really enjoy something new. It's like it's like trying new vegetables. It's like trying new fruit and vegetables. Sometimes you think, oh, don't like a look of that. And it surprises you, really. I don't like bananas. I find bananas uh, horrible because um, when I was a child, my elder brother pinned me down on the floor and forced bananas in my mouth and down my throat to such a point that the bananas were coming literally through my nose as I was coughing. And um, that was very cruel. But I suppose that's what brothers do, I don't know. I know if uh, I had a younger brother, I certainly wouldn't do that. But there you go. Some people are just born naturally cruel, I think. But over recent years, I couldn't even I couldn't even stand the smell of I couldn't even stand the smell of bananas after that. The taste of bananas, just just that mushy. <laughs> just that mushy taste in my mouth used to make me feel really physically sick and um, over the last several years um, I've, I've, I've gone to eating bananas um, puree um, which was which was you know a, a major step for me because um, when I had um, that stuff that was I could taste it now actually it's that's that's how that's how these things affect you in later life doesn't it you you get this residual memory um, in your mind of this these events and these tastes and these smells and the sounds and it, it can be quite dis disturbing really but we need to also put things into um, we need also need to put things into context as well I think because we can't co go through life constantly um, living in fear or upset or something. We need to. What we need to do is confront our fears, and whatever that fear is or discomfort is, we need to try and come to terms with it, and 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 move on and try and and, and understand why we feel that way. So. What I've done is I've taken um, to eating bananas now and um, it's been a long road. It's taken me several years to actually come to terms with eating a banana. <laughs> it really is. You think, oh, is it only a banana? But it's not a banana to me. <laughs> it's, 
it's a memory, a very strong, painful memory, hurtful memory that I carried with me and to 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 come over to overcome that I found it's um it was it was it was a journey. I'm talking about bananas. I can't I can't believe I'm just talking about bananas. <laughs> there you go. How f things affect you sometimes. We don't realize it. We really don't. Okay, so we we get we get in there. We got the bones of him. We got the bones of him. Um, I've got to pick up some um, burnt umber, and this is a burnt umber gouache, not a watercolor. I could use watercolor. In fact, let's see if I can't. Let's see if I can't use a watercolor. Let's get uh, let's get a bit of this burnt umber. There you go. Mix that in with the raw sienna. Because he's got a brown muzzle, or he's got a, a tinge of brown in his muzzle, like this. So we're just going to put that in, a bit of raw sienna, a bit of burnt umber. I'm just going to place that in like this. Thinking about the painting that I'm actually going to be doing, which is which is good. Getting to look at Benji's features. Because I've gone in with a with a lighter colour first. As I said, um, painting with watercolours and gouache, you need to start off with a light and build up build up your darks. And I, Jason um, Bowen has actually helped me a lot with watercolours and gouache when we went to um, London. Um, he introduced me to this medium and, and that was great because previously I was just painting with very, very thin uh, acrylics and I found that painting with watercolours gives me a a bit more versatility. I can I can manipulate the paint a bit more. So we we get in we get in him to look something similar to to what he is. Um, I'm just going to pick up a detailing brush and get some white gouache. This over there. I'm going to get up a little bit of. Um, let's get a little bit of. I keep picking up the gouache. I shouldn't really. I should be picking up some watercolors as well. Let's just, get, let's just get some blue. There we go. So we've got a blue, a bluey white. And a bit more blue. Doesn't matter what blue, it doesn't really matter. That's, that's violet. What's this one? This is. Uh, looks like an ultramarine blue. That's better. Put a bit too much water on there. It's okay, we can play with it. Let's just get this. Looks a bit like Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer now. A bit more blue. I like the blue. I like that blue, it's nice. It all makes sense. Normally it does. And if it doesn't, well. What have I lost except a little bit of watercolour and a little bit of time. I'm 
there we go in fact let's get a bit of black because we need to go around the top of his nose here because he's got a definite grumpy type of face I notice this comes down and around that way like that and this comes down around like that and this bit comes around like that You could just paint this in in watercolors if you wanted to, and um, if you were doing a commission, you could just paint this in watercolors and wash, and you could sell it that way if you wanted to. If it was, if you took your time, don't know what I'm doing. I'm just basically just playing with this, and just seeing what. what I can come up with. Oops, a bit too much water in that one. Let that dry off. Just tissue paper on that. There we go. No, oh, it doesn't like it. He's coming. He's getting there, I hope. I can see a little bit of Benji in there now. I can see a little bit of Benji in there. Got a few little wrinkles like that. There's a nice little... There's a bit of pool of water there. Well, we'll just let that soak into the water into the paper, there we are. Let's have a look at this eye over here, let's get a bit of blue. Let's put some blue in. Just catch a little bit of highlight, shadow. Bit of blue on there looks nice I think. Get some black and it's just I'm just gonna play around with this eye a little bit now. You get a bit of blue in there. Again, let's put a bit of blue around here. Just gonna make his eye a little bit rounder. As I said, this is just a study. This uh, again, I, I I do a lot of study paintings, and, and I've been doing that a lot on YouTube lately because I think what I find it's starting to help people relax more, and I also find that. Um, it's allowing people not to, not to stress too much about their work, and I think it's 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 great to be able to just paint and not worry about whether it's perfect or not. Because this is not about perfection. This is about a study. This is about a study. Let's get some more black. That's what I like about it. 
these study paintings is because it gives you more flexibility and the ability to be able to to learn with freedom rather than being held up with expectations of what's going to happen is if you just allow yourself the freedom of just creating something it doesn't really matter about outcome let's get a bit of burned umber in there Okay, some raw sienna. Just to give it that warmth there. Could you do this in acrylics? Yeah, you could, I suppose. I could, um, I've done, as I said, um, a number of different paintings in acrylics um, just as studies but I have gone to like painting like this oh he's coming I quite like him. Let's get a bit a bit, bit more burned in, but let's just increase that colour now. This is watercolour I'm putting on. Um, I'm just going to get a bit of that blue colour, blue and white, just to mix into there like that to give it a bit of highlight. And again, what I'm going to do is get my, my black paint on a small brush and I'm just going to emphasize a bit of shadow in just around there like that. And we can add a little bit more black onto that. A little bit as this dries then. There you go. He's coming. He looks quite nice actually. So I'm going to put a bit more black wash on the top of there, like that, a little bit more black wash on my palette. There you go. And um, I'm going to go back in to this year, by year. Just going to just sharpen up a little bit just to emphasize that I'm going to get a little bit of that blue white just on the tip of my brush maybe a bit of gouache maybe just to bring in some highlight on that ear I'm just going to mix that in with a bit of blackness on there That does it just gives a little bit of shape, a little bit of shape to his ear then. There you go. Now he's looking a bit more like a pug. So let's get some more black shadow coming down. He's got a bit of an eye, so maybe let's put this, let's let's put that out like that. Yeah, we need to um, we need to adjust this a bit, I think. We need to put some black in there like that, just to even hear my thought processes now as I. painting in. Put a little bit of black under there like that. Just increasing the black here. Bring 
Maybe a bit of shadow down there. I don't want to work too hard on this, but I just just trying to basically get his his features in place, and I just want to I want it I want him to look like Benji, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I don't do perfect, not not at this stage, and I will do another painting directly after this one then and I will I will show you that um, when I made it in the video I will put that in you somewhere to show you what the second um, painting looked like because this is just the first stage this is just my first my first grapple at it then um, how many do I do normally I will do about three or four of these studies to, to get Benji. I'll be doing three or four studies of Benji to get him right. That's the plan. Some would say, well, it's a lot of work life for, for a commission. Do I have to do that? No, you don't. Oops. <laughs> no, you don't have to do it. Um, this is just a personal um, thing that, that I do. And um, I find it works for me. And it's, I'm all about showing what I do. Um, and if I can help you and give you a little bit of information, then that's cool. I'm happy to do that. Everybody paints differently. I'm going to get a little bit of yellow just on the tip of my brush. I just want to put a bit of yellow in. I'm looking at this painting needs a little bit of yellow in there, I think, just to bring that to life a little bit like that. Definitely got a nice big bright mark there. It's more of a blue type of area in there. So I'm looking at, what I'm doing is I'm looking at my, my reference paint, my photograph that I took of Benji and I can't show you that at the moment because I haven't been given permission by the the person that owns Benji to, to share you his photograph because I didn't take the photograph, they did. So um, just to be airing on the side of copyright, I don't want to do that just in case, because it's quite a, it's, it's a professional photograph that's been taken of Benji. So I guess they've spent a bit of money on Benji over the years, and they said, "Can you can you just paint this for us, please, Clive?" It's one of my customers that um, on my day job, just use uh, window cleaning asked me to do this so I thought it would be good if I um, brought you into this process today and hope I can share something with you okay I've had, I've had enough with uh, Benji's face I'm gonna do his scarf now um, because he had a scarf on. Yay, he did. Don't see many dogs with scarves on. There we go. This uh I think the red um, goes really well then. Just watercolor. This is just a, a red. And 
plenty of water. So I am decided what size I'm going to paint Benji because I was told as long as it's not humongous, it's fine. I've been given a budget, so they've agreed on a price. So really speaking, it's all down to me now um, to, to produce uh, a nice painting on a canvas and size of my choice. Now I've got a wall, um, they showed me a wall that they want to put this painting on, so I, I got an idea roughly how big this canvas is going to be. I think it's going to be um, a 24 by 24 square, that's two foot by two foot, so it's quite a big, quite a big canvas. They don't want any background, which is good. It's good for me because I don't have to work hard. Um, so let's just put some shadow in, some folds in this scarf. I just added a bit of black gouache. like that just to give me some folds I gotta put some shadow under Benji's face there like that bringing that out um, there's a there's a roll there and a roll there like that all this is is just wet paint and then just blending that in very quickly to the red paint like that which makes for some lovely looking folds and stuff in his scarf so again we got some shadow under there and we got some shadow coming in that area there. What I can do now is get some um, crimson red, watercolour crimson or gouache, it depends on what you want. I'm just going to put a bit of crimson in just to flavour that up a bit like this. That looks pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to get myself a very thin um, detail brush. And I'm going into some like semi-dry type of black paint. I just want to do is I and I want to do this I oops that's because I'm sitting on a funny angle my eyesight's not what it used to be. I'll try and get them about the same size and they've got to be round. Okay. I'm just getting a little bit of titanium white. Put some highlights in his nose and his eye. His 
bit of reflection there on his lip there, there's a little bit there, a little bit there. Getting my brush which has just come out of the pot and it's just a little bit wet, so I'm just going to lay them down like that. And I think we need to just get a little bit more burnt umber. A bit of black on his nose like this. Get a bit of white then. Letting that dry a little bit. Okay, this black. A little grey. I want to make a bit of grey because I want to just come in. There's some wrinkles there. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. I tell you what I could do is put a bit more blue. Let's get some of this ultramarine blue. Let's put a bit of blue into his nose there just to, to cool that off just to make it look balanced like that am I happy with that as a study I think I, I think I am I think I'm really happy with that what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna sign this one and I'm gonna put it one and um, I'll sign the other one and put it as two and I'll show you that one at the end of the painting but I hope that's um, given you something to think about um, please like comment share and subscribe and um, let me know how you get on if you decide to do um, a painting in gouache I'm just gonna play with this this is the thing you shouldn't play too much once you're happy with it just put it down and forget about it and maybe do another one see if you can improve a little bit on it there we go so please like comment share and subscribe and i will see you next time so this was um the what painting i just did and um this was number one and this is the second painting i did just after number two so you can see that it's greatly improved so please like comment share and subscribe